Ijarik, otherwise known as Hollow Chess, was first introduced in A New Hope, when Chewbacca and R2-D2 were playing it on the Millennium Falcon. But it's also shown up in a number of other places, such as The Force Awakens, and in Solo. A wooden version of the game was briefly shown in Rogue One, and it's even appeared in the LEGO Star Wars video games. I started thinking about this game again because I recently got a toy version from Disney's Galaxy's Edge store and reviewed it on the channel up here. This reminded me that I had some 3D models for the chess pieces that I've never actually done anything with. They were released by Build It and They Will Come, which is a subscription-based service that gives you uh, Star Wars-themed 3D models for you to print. And uh, as I say, I had gotten them maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and just never actually used them. My first thought was to maybe replace these toy-like pieces on the Disney board with some more realistic versions, but this set is actually pretty small, and it comes with a wooden board that's not really like the one we saw in the film, so I thought it would be more impressive to create something that was a little closer to what we saw in the film, and also make it a little bit bigger as well. So I decided to look for a 3D model for the Dejaric board, and the only one I could really find was on Umagine.com. It was made for a set of low-poly hollow chest figures, but the board itself seems relatively decent. Luckily, they included a complete version of the board in addition to the one that had been split up for smaller printers, so I was able to print it out full-size on my Creality CR10S5, which is my largest printer. Now, I should point out that this is not a completely accurate model of what we saw in the film. It has these grooves on the top when in fact the actual board is all just smooth with different colored squares on the top and it's got some other details that are different but I think it's pretty close and it's a decent looking model in any case. The Dejaric table from the movies is a literal piece of furniture. It's actually quite large. It's about 30 inches in diameter. My largest printer can only handle maybe 17 or 18 inches in diameter so this is going to be roughly half scale I guess from what we saw in the film. I believe I printed this at 0.24 millimeter layer height, which is not super fine, but it still took several days to print, and making it much finer than that would have really extended the print time considerably, so I decided to do that as a kind of compromise. But it will mean that I have to do some sanding later on. You can see if we look closely, there's some 3D print lines and even some pixelation because I've blown this up larger than the actual model was intended to be but I think we can take care of that with a little elbow grease. And in fact, here it is after some sanding. I didn't go crazy with it yet at this point because it can be difficult with this kind of translucent filament in particular to see where exactly the rough spots are. But after I sprayed it with some filler primer, you could see fairly easily where we still had a lot of work to do in terms of sanding. So if we look at the sides, you can see where there's still quite a bit of stair stepping from the 3D printing and even a mist layer it looks like there that we'll have to fill in and on the top there's all kinds of lines from the 3D printing which we'd like to fill in and make smooth if we can. That's where the filler primer really comes in handy. Once you've sprayed it on there and sanded it starts to fill in all the gaps and smooths it out. It's really kind of perfect for this kind of application I think. These smooth surfaces should not be too much of a problem to sand but on the control panel where we have lights and switches and things It'll be a little trickier, so I have these sanding twigs, little tiny little pieces of sandpaper that I can uh, use to go in between them and hopefully smooth them out as well. I'm not going to go crazy with this, I'm not going to try and make it absolutely perfect, but I do want to see how good I can get it. So at this point I have sanded it again, and primed it again, and sanded it one more time, and we've gotten it relatively smooth. I'm going to take some of this uh, dark steel spray paint which I've never used before, but seemed like it might be a good color, and uh, spray the whole thing with it, and hopefully, once you've done that, it'll look relatively good. So here we have it, all sprayed silver, and it actually looks quite good, I think. It looks like it could be metal in many places, although I'm going to need to put on some black paint to kind of give it a little bit more depth, and I have to figure out what to do about the top there. It should be, of course, silver and black on top, I considered taping it off and spraying the black and silver squares on top, but the way that this has been modeled with the deep grooves between the squares, I think, would make it difficult to make that look really clean. So I decided to just go with a paintbrush and 
paint it on, paint it all black first, and then paint the silver on top of that. I could have just left the silver ones as they were since I've already sprayed this silver, but the silver on the top should actually be a shinier color than what's on the base. Of course, the danger when you're using a brush is that it's going to look like you used a brush, but I think actually uh, once I did two or three coats, it looks relatively decent, and I'm going to go back over this with a gloss coat as well to give it a little bit more shine. So I think uh, this actually turned out about as well as I could have expected. Here I am putting a black wash over the silver. Basically it's watered down black paint that I put on and then just wipe partially off after it's dried a little bit. And it really gives it a little bit more depth. Then I just had to put on some of the final details like the lights, it has red lights on one side and blue on the other. I decided not to try to put the little symbols that are on the keys below the lights. I think it would be way too difficult to put those on by hand. Maybe I could make something like a, a transfer or something, put it on there at some point later on. But for now, I think it came out really well. This is with the gloss coat on it. And, you know, if you look carefully, you can still see some imperfections. But from a reasonable distance, it actually looks pretty good, I think. And I think it'll serve as a nice base for the chess pieces that we're going to be printing next. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics, including fine art, design, and photography. There are no ads, and they're launching new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Recently, I've been taking the class Polymer Clay and Sculpting Basics by Stephanie Kilgast. She gives an excellent introduction to the basics of using polymer clay, including the tools and techniques you'll need. I've done a little sculpting with polymer clay, but clearly I have a lot left to learn, and I look forward to checking out some of her other classes. If you're like me, you probably have some extra time around the house these days, so why not put it to good use? The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Since the board and the pieces were designed by different people, I had to figure out how big I wanted the pieces to be on the board, and that basically just involved eyeballing it, so I just reduced them down to the size that seemed appropriate. These pieces, though, are not apparently in scale with one another, at least the ones that I received, so you can't just reduce them all by 50% or something like that and have them work because they will uh, end up being different sizes. So I just, I just guessed, essentially, but I think it turned out relatively well. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but I just use Simplify 3D, which you see here, to kind of mock up what it should look like, and then I exported the figures at the size that they are here and put them into Cheetobox for printing. Cheetobox, of course, is the slicer that prepares the 3D models for printing on whatever your printer is. In this case, I used the regular Elegoo Mars for everything except for one model that wouldn't quite fit on the build plate of the regular Mars, so I went to the Mars 2 Pro for just that one piece. And you just have to arrange the model so that it's got the correct orientation so that it'll print properly. And that's not always easy to figure out sometimes. Uh, I did have a couple of failures where I just either didn't quite orient it properly or I didn't have enough support material. But most of them printed just fine. Now, because we were using the regular Mars here and not the Mars 2 Pro, it did take a fair amount of time for each figure, about six or eight hours to print. Now the printer, of course, prints upside down like this so that you can see it uh, building up layer by layer from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, depending on how you look at it. After cleaning the parts with some alcohol, I put them in the Elegoo Mercury curing chamber to cure them and make them nice and hard so that we can go ahead and paint them. I haven't talked much about the Mercury curing chamber on the channel, but it's actually pretty good. I bought it with my own money a while back and I've used it quite a lot. After curing the pieces, I did what little assembly was necessary. That's really only a couple of them require any assembly. Did a little cleanup in terms of sanding and used a tiny bit of putty in a couple places. But basically, uh, it's just straight out of the printer. But I have primed these gray, as you may be able to tell. I didn't try too hard to fill in some of the uh, scarring from the support material in many of these because it actually kind of looked totally appropriate, so I just left it where it was. In terms of the painting, there are too many figures to show in detail how I painted each of these, but I will be showing a little bit of each just to give you an idea as part of a, uh, a little musical montage, and I hope you enjoy it.
and here they all are on the board, and I'm really happy with how everything turned out, actually. I was a little concerned that the feet of the figures might scratch the board, or that over time the paint on the two surfaces would stick together, so I put felt on the bottom of all of the uh, feet of the figures, and that seems to have worked quite well. I just cut out the pieces of felt and put it on with some super glue. Some of them were a little bit more difficult than others, like this guy had to sort of use an X-Acto knife to cut out the, the exact shape of his feet. There are multiple contradictory rule sets for this game, from what I can tell, so I don't know if this arrangement I have here is actually even possible in the game. I just went for something that looked kind of good and had a visual balance to it. Also, I couldn't resist photoshopping this picture of them, showing what they might look like if they actually were holograms. But that was kind of cool. As usual, check the video description for information and links related to this project. The figures themselves, as I said, are available from Build It and They Will Come, but you have to be a member and then also buy them separately. So there's a little bit of a, a high hurdle there, but uh, if you really want them, uh, they're good quality and I, I do recommend them. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and to my patrons on Patreon for helping bring it to you, especially these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. Thanks very much for your support. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can check out the link in the video description. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get perks such as early videos, behind the scenes, posts, and more. Thanks for watching.